All right, so we are finished with stage two. We've met our objective, so we're ready to move on to stage three. I already saved my work, so I'm ready to move on. Just go to the panel menu, go up to the top of the panel menu, and left click on the next stage button. That's going to take us to stage three, walls, fences, and railing. Now what I usually do is I get set up for what I want to draw first. So I go down to my walls, fences, and railing. I'd like to draw the wall first, so I'm going to click on wall. And I need to know exactly where I'm going to be drawing. So the measure tool really comes in handy here. Um, the measure tool is on the fourth row of tools. Looks like a little ruler icon. Click on that ruler icon. Bring your cursor over. Zoom in to the top left hand corner of the house. We're going to measure down from that corner. So I'm just going to left click on the corner, bring my cursor down, and I'm going to type in 16 feet, just 16 on my keyboard, and then enter. And now I've got a 16 foot measurement that I'll use to know exactly where I'm going to begin drawing with my, with my line tool. I'm already set up to draw a wall. I will activate my line tool to begin drawing. Click on your line tool. Now, a really important uh, thing that you need to know about this stage is that you do not have to complete your shapes. You can stop and start drawing whenever you want to. That's unique to this stage. Every other stage that you draw in, you're going to need to complete your shapes. But this one's the exception to the rule. You can stop and start wherever your wall or your fence stops. Okay, so where, you're, where you want to stop drawing, you left click on the end point, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, we've got our drawing tool ready to go. We've got our measurement for, you know, marking where we need to begin drawing. Zoom into the end of that or bottom of that 16 foot measurement, left click, and draw to the left 12 feet even. Okay, now we're going to draw down. 108 feet even. You zoom out, pan up just a little bit, come down 108 feet. Okay. All right, now I'm going to come to the right, 94 feet. I just have to kind of pan and zoom as I need to. Come to the right and type in 94 and then we're gonna come up 128 feet. And that's the end of the wall. That's where we wanna stop drawing. So we can left click on the end point and that will stop the line tool from drawing anymore. Okay, you can only do that in this stage. Now with your wall selected, let's look over at our wall settings or options in our walls, fences, and railing tab. We already have ourselves set up to make a wall. And then there are three parts of the wall. Left click on wall. Set the height of the wall to five feet. Set the thickness to nine inches. So this is setting up what the base of the wall looks like. Then click on wall cap. And that's going to uh, give us the settings for the wall cap. Aesthetically, what do we want the wall cap to look like? And what do we want the size to be? Those are the two options. If you left click on the button next to style, your library is going to open with uh, several different profiles, different looking caps with different details, different architectural details that you can choose from. You simply double left click on the, the, um, the cap style that you want. Okay, so that's another option. Um, you can click on pillars. See the settings for your pillars. If your client doesn't have pillars, you just simply turn the toggle off. If they do have pillars, then you can set it up so that the pillars look like their pillars. I'm gonna set the pillar uh, to um, a width of two feet and a height of five feet. Cap style would be very similar to what we're looking at in the, in the, um, in the wall cap. The pillar caps would, would give you this similar kind of uh, options to choose from. And then, of course, spacing would determine how far apart the pillars are. Actually, if you reduce the spacing, the system will actually produce more pillars. And if you increase the spacing, it will begin removing pillars. I have my spacing set to 20 feet. 
you want to set yours the same as mine. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and close the library. And we're going to deselect the wall. And we're going to switch gears. We're going to switch over to fence railing. So with your wall deselected, that's pretty important. You're going to go over to your walls, fences, and railing, and you're going to click on fence railing. And then we'll draw the fence uh, extending from the top right hand corner of the house over to the wall, making sure that the two lines do not connect. If they connect, we can't select the two sections independently. So I want to leave a gap or a space or just a slight disconnect in between the two so that they can be selected independently. Now I'll activate my line tool and I'm going to zoom in to the top right hand corner, left click, and I'm going to draw to the right 15 feet and left click. Or you can enter that in, you can type it in, whatever your preference is. But to stop drawing, you go back to the end point and left click one more time to stop drawing. And you can see there's a gap or a space there in between those two endpoints. But it won't notice it because I'm adjacent to the, uh, to the pillar. And over in your walls, fences, and railing, you'll see the settings similar to what we saw with the wall, but a little bit more detailed because there's more pieces to a fence than there are to a wall. So you've got a, a few more settings. You've got posts, boards, and rails that you can set up. In fact, if you're building or installing a fence, you can really make it look like what you're going to uh, install. If you want to just aesthetically match what your client already has, you can leave your fence selected in 2D and go into 3D. Let me rotate around and show you. See how that fence is highlighted? Got the gizmo on it. Because it was selected in 2D, it remains selected in 3D. I can open my library up and I can go to my fence presets and take a look at all the different options that I have for making the fence look like their fence. I have wrought iron fence, vinyl picket fence, uh, ranch style fences, um, just double left click on the one that you want. I'm going to go with the aluminum flat top and then I'll deselect it to see what it looks like in 3D. Looks great. And I have a wall and a fence. So I've met my objective with this stage. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck and collapse the category in my library. Good habit to get into. Close that library up and go back into 2D. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick save on my work and then we'll move on to our next objective. So now we're ready to move on to our next objective. We are going to draw some shapes in stage seven. Um, that is the hardscape and deck stage. And right now we're in stage three, wall fences and railing. You can click on the next stage button or another way to navigate to that stage is by clicking on the title bar of the stage. And then a drop down list will, uh, will uh, give you a, a list of all of the stages. And if you left click on that stage, that's a faster way to go to that stage. So we'll just click on stage seven, hardscapes and decks. So we're going to make quite a few hardscape shapes actually. And um, we'll start by going to our hardscapes and decks tab and making sure that we're set up to create hardscapes because in this stage, you can define the shape as a hardscape or a wood deck. We are going to have a wood deck here in a little bit, but we're gonna start with quite a few hardscape shapes. And this is gonna give us some uh, practice with our rectangle tool, um, just completing our shapes. And I'm going to teach you how to make a pretty significant modification on a shape too. That's our next objective, creating three new shapes and making a change to one of those shapes. So we're set up to create hardscapes. I'm gonna activate my rectangle tool and I'm going to zoom in to the bottom left-hand corner of the back of the house. That is the area that we created um, with the extended roof line and the columns to support that extended roof line. Now we're gonna create the patio underneath that and I'll use the bottom left-hand corner of the column as my site reference. So with my rectangle tool, I'm gonna to left click on that bottom left-hand corner and I'm gonna extend the rectangle tool up 16 feet and then over to the right 
20 feet. Fits in really nicely in that space and it actually snaps onto the line of the house. It makes it really easy to make that rectangle. All right, with your shape completed and selected, look over at your hardscapes and decks tab. This is a hardscape, we did that already. And the height is going to default to zero feet, zero inches. That is the defaulted height of a hardscape. You have other options like adding edge trim or coping, which would put a ribbon or border around the outside. I'm gonna leave both of those off for now. Um, we have lip style. Doesn't really apply because we're not exposing this hardscape above ground level, so you wouldn't see the lip. So that's uh, that wouldn't pertain to this particular shape. And one other thing, um, that I want you to notice is that if you look in your object settings, your auto elevation is grayed out. You cannot elevate hardscapes, that is a limitation. They are not able to be elevated. They always generate from the ground up and it's good to understand that about hardscapes. All right, let's activate our move tool. Left click away from our shape and go over into the 3D environment. See what that looks like. So I usually have some kind of hardscape material there. Mine defaulted to, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, definitely looks like a hardscape and that's usually what happens. It a lot of times will uh, pick up or remember what you did on a previous project. So yesterday I might've worked with this, with this material. But when we get to materials, we'll update the finishes on all of our shapes. Okay, but we've, we've met our objective with that shape, it's complete. We'll make another one coming off of the um, side of the house where we have the other door. Okay, so we'll go back into 2D. Kind of zoom out or pan over to the bottom right-hand corner of the house. Activate your rectangle tool. Go to the bottom right-hand corner, left-click there, and we're going to come to the left 26 feet, and then down 21 feet. Just kind of hold it steady and get that all squared away. Check your work, make sure everything's all squared up and then left click. 26 by 21. Check your work with mine, make sure you have the same thing that I do. The settings for this shape are going to default to the previous shape, but never hurts to just put your eyes on it, make sure it's a zero feet um, height. All right, now in between these two shapes, I wanna walk away. So I'll just make another rectangle in between these two shapes, make sure everything's aligned correctly. No gaps or spaces or overlapping, that's what we call a clean design. Go to the bottom right hand corner of patio number one, the first one that we drew, left click and come to the right 20 feet and then up six feet. Left click and you should have a complete shape. Same settings as the previous two shapes. Okay, activate your move tool, left click away from that shape, go into 3D and you should have three shapes. And if you look closely, you'll see their connection is very seamless. Can't tell that there are two shapes connected. There's no gaps or spaces or overlapping, which sometimes would cause like a distortion, anomaly, something that doesn't look right. Uh, that usually means that you have two shapes overlapping, but ours look really good or mine looks really good. Hopefully yours does too. All right, so we've got the back patio kind of worked out. Now let's say that we've made a decision that uh, this patio, this, this patio that we made coming off of the door here, the second patio, I'll call it. The second patio, I need to revise it. I've made, I've made a change and I want a little walkway coming down to the pool area. So I'm gonna show you how to use the divide tool and how to use the modification points to make a uh, revision to a shape. All right, so we'll go back into 2D and we're going to select that shape. You have to select the shape. Okay, and that way we can use the modification points as our site references and we will create divisions in the 26 foot line here on the bottom, I'll make a division or a new modification point, and then I'll make one on the 21 foot section, and then I'll uh, make a make a pretty significant change to this shape. Um, the divide tool adds additional 
modification point. So basically with my divide tool, I can take the 26 foot line and I can make a 20 foot section and a six foot section if I divide it in the right place. So the divide tool is on your second row of tools. On the far right hand side, click on the divide tool. Go to the bottom right hand corner of the shape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in really nice and close so I can use the grid lines to count how far over I'm going to insert this new point. So I've got my grid set to a one foot grid. So each line is equal to one foot. I am going to count six grid lines to the left from the bottom right hand corner. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six grid lines, left click. Now I have sort of split that line segment into two sections. I have a 20 foot section, I have a six foot section. So I'm, I've divided the line with this point. All right, I'm gonna use the divide tool again on the 21 foot section. I'm gonna count from the corner up five grid lines. One, two, three, four, five. Left click. And now I've uh, made a division in that line segment. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the corner point and I'm going to move it and make a completely different shape. I'm gonna activate my move tool. The corner points, the solid points on the corners of your shapes, they move independently. So watch what happens if I left click and drag this up diagonally and create a right angle. So I was able to move that. And now I am going to move the vertical five foot section over to the left and create my little walkway coming from this patio out onto the pool. All right, so the way that you move a midpoint is you left click on the hollow point in the middle of the line segment. And that moves that entire line segment. Whereas the solid points move independently, this midpoint moves that entire line segment. So I'll move this over to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left. I'm left clicking and dragging it to the left. And I'm going to stop when my line segment above is at 20 feet. Okay, and I'm just gonna pause there for a second so you can uh, do the same on your screen. We use the midpoint to drag that section over and modify the shape so that I've got a little extended walkway here. And that was what I wanted to do. I divided the lines, I moved the uh, corner point, got that all squared away, and then I moved this section over. All right, I'm gonna deselect that and take a look at it in 3D. We've got a different looking patio. So that's when you wanna make a revision, but you don't wanna to have to redraw the shape again. Use those midpoints, use divide tools, use the tools that you have. And that's just one example. I'm gonna go ahead and go back into 2D and we'll start on our next objective. Next, we are gonna draw a kitchen island. And a kitchen island is a shape that we would draw in the hardscape stage. So we'll draw the base of our kitchen island. And then for kitchen islands, you have lots of accessories in the library that you can add like grills and warming drawers, kegerators. But there's one accessory that requires an opening and that would be a sink. So I wanna show you how to make the kitchen island with the opening for a sink. We'll, we'll be using a couple of tools that we have not worked with yet. Go ahead and go over and click on the line tool and we'll draw the, the L-shaped base of the kitchen island. Um, zoom in to the top right-hand corner of the uh, patio that we just worked with. Zoom into that top right-hand corner, left click, and come down 10 feet even. Come over to the left 13 feet. And then we're going to use the outline tool to mirror this side of the shape. The outline tool is a great tool when you want to mirror an existing shape. You can mirror whole shapes and you can mirror partial shapes. This is an example of mirroring a partial shape. Okay, so we want the other side to mirror the side that we've drawn. 
So I'm just going to drag that active line over to my toolbar and it's just going to kind of hang out until I switch to the outline tool. Click on the outline tool. When you bring your cursor back over into your uh, plan view, you're going to see a question mark attached to your cursor. What shape do you want to mirror or outline? We want to mirror the 13 foot and 10 foot section. And you'll notice that each end has a large yellow square. Can't miss it. So um, we just click on either one of those and then offset the width of the island. So I just go down to the end of the 13 foot section, left click. Then I move my cursor up with the offset function. I'm going to come up three feet. That will determine a three foot width. And when I left click, I complete my shape. So it's a pretty fast, easy way to mirror a partial shape. All right, now I'm going to switch over to my move tool so I don't inadvertently begin uh, outlining something. And I'm going to go over to my hardscapes tab. I'm going to set the height of this island to three feet, zero inches. Okay, none of the other settings directly below this apply. Lip style would would apply though because it is exposed above ground level you would want to determine what lip style you were going to build on this uh, or or install or or apply to this particular island you have lots of options square round half round near flush or custom if you click on custom your custom profile has a button next to it that you can left click on and that will open a uh, a a list of additional lip styles, more custom lip styles. So you could choose from French or incline. Um, some of these apply more to what you would see on a pool shape. So you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to go ahead and close the library. And um, the lip height, I'm going to leave at three inches. So my Kitchen Island should look uh, just like the just like the base of a Kitchen Island, but you know what? Let's jump over into 3D and take a look. Go into 3D, and you should see your Kitchen Island. We're going to be making an opening in that Kitchen Island using the Carve tool. The Carve tool uh, carves into uh, shapes, which will be perfect for our sink. So we'll go back into 2D. To work with the carve tool, you'll notice if you um, if you if you just look over at your toolbar on the third row of tools, you have your carve tool, but it's all grayed out. I can't click on it. You have to select the shape that you want to carve into, basically. So we left click on the kitchen island to select it. That's an important step. It's an important part of the process. Notice that your carve tool lightens up. Now I can click on it. I'm going to click on the carve tool. And another important step is the green box or envelope that you see around your kitchen island. That's the system letting you know that you are isolating this shape for a very specialized kind of drawing. So we're ready to draw. The opening for the sink is one foot three inches by one foot three inches. So I'm making a square. I can use my rectangle tool and, and we've worked with that a little bit. Uh, activate your rectangle tool and zoom in to the top of the island, right up here toward the house, just anywhere. Um, we'll move it once we complete it. So remember, if I want to make a square, if I want all four sides of my shape to be even, if I hold down the control key before I engage the rectangle tool, it will make even sides. So I'm going to left click and I'm going to come to the right uh, one foot three inches and that will make a one foot three inch uh, uh, dimension on all four sides. You left click to complete your shape. Now go over to your panel menu. Now um, I'm going to change my font style so it's going to make it a little or size so that it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to check your work because my font's really big. I'm going to change that and make that a smaller font size. That might be a little bit easier for everyone to see. Okay, now I can activate my move tool and I can left click and drag that. 
and just place it where I want it to go. If I were working, you know, on a real working project, I'd probably need to add some measurements in to just be really precise. But uh, I'm just eyeballing this and putting it where I think it should go. And then we'll take a look at that in 3D. We should have an opening in the island ready for the sink to go in. All right. So we're still working on more hardscapes. I've got a couple more uh, hardscape shapes that I want to show you. I've got um, hardscapes that I'm going to draw on the front of the house, a driveway, an entryway to the front door, stairs leading to that entryway. I have some handrails around those stairs. So there's a few more things that we need to do in the hardscape stage, but we're going to focus on the... Um, Front of the house and you know what i'm going to go into 3d because i actually like to give you an idea of what to expect so i'm going to rotate around to the front of the house it's got a little alcove here um, over on the right hand side i'm going to have a driveway that slopes down to the street in fact the whole front yard kind of slopes down to the street not that uncommon uh, and hardscapes have a setting that they can align with the slope of the terrain. And that's what you would expect to see with the driveway. Now with the walkway, I wouldn't want that alignment. I would want that to be level. So in the front, we're gonna have two different examples of hardscapes, one that follows the slope of the terrain and one that doesn't. Now this is all knowing in advance that I'm going to, to be applying an elevation change here very soon. We're just getting our hardscapes set up for um, correctly for for the project, okay? So we're, we're gonna go back into 2D. Let's make the driveway first. I'm gonna zoom into the top left-hand corner of the house, the front of the house, top left-hand corner. All right, I'm gonna make a 20 foot by 24 foot driveway using my rectangle tool. So left click on your rectangle tool and then go to the top left-hand corner of your house shape. Left click and come to the right 24 feet and then up 20 feet. You kind of have to hold everything really steady. There's nothing to snap onto. So it's all about keeping your mouth steady. I think I've got it squared away now. 24 by 20. Yep, looks good. I'm going to left click. Now I think I'll make my font a little bit bigger. That's just for training purposes, so that uh, makes it really easy for you guys to check your work. Okay, so that is a hardscape. It is going to be in alignment with a slope. So we got to keep that in mind over in our panel menu. We also have to keep in mind that this shape is going to uh, default to the to the settings of the previous shape that we made. Always something important that we have to pay attention to. So the height right now is at three feet, and we definitely don't want our driveway at a three foot height. That would be pretty impractical. So we'll lower that to zero feet, zero inches. And then directly below that zero feet, zero inches, I'm going to turn on follow terrain. That's the setting that we need to use when we want our hardscape to bend and align with an elevation change. It's really very important to know. Okay, so zero feet, follow terrain. Nothing's going to happen right now, but when I apply the elevation change, that shape is going to align. All right, next shape is going to be the walkway to the front door. And that also is a rectangular shape. So I'm gonna use my rectangle tool again. Um, the site reference is a little bit tricky. Go to the alcove, the inset part of the house in the front, but go to the bottom right-hand corner. Left click there. And then we're gonna come over to the left 10 feet and up 18 feet. So you kind of have to hold your mouse steady, 10 feet by 18 feet. Let me get it squared away. I think I've got it now. Checking my values to make sure they're correct. I'm going to go ahead and left click. That looks great. The height of that shape I want to be 
zero feet, zero inches also. But I'm going to turn off the follow terrain. This is a walkway. I need it to stay flat and level. So I'll leave that at zero feet, zero inches. Okay, we'll go ahead and just check our work in 3D, make sure we've got complete shapes. If you ever go into 3D and you don't see your shape, it usually means that you didn't complete the shape or you didn't draw it correctly. And a lot of times you'll see red lines on your shapes. But we're checking our work really consistently, making sure we've got complete shapes so that it renders correctly in 3D. And it looks great. That's exactly what I would expect to, it to look like. But here in a little bit, when we change the elevation, you'll see a change in that driveway. Okay, let's go ahead and go back into 2D. So the next thing that we are going to work on are the uh, stairs and the handrails extending from the walkway. Keep in mind that we're going to have a slope, so these stairs are necessary. And for the handrails, we decided to add a curve. We were trying to figure out a way or somewhere where we could show you how to work with the arc tool. And so we decided to make these handrails kind of ornate, create a curve, and, uh, and that will uh, give us an opportunity to work with the arc tool. So the handrails I'm going to draw next, and then we'll create the stairs in between the handrails and that actually is going to work out really well that's a great order to do this in and uh, that'll make a little bit more sense once we have those shapes in place we are going to start with the line tool I'm still working with hardscapes and decks I still have my hardscape settings in place so I'm going to activate my line tool and I'm going to zoom in to the top right hand corner of the walkway Left click at the top right hand corner and draw up four feet even. Now I'm going to switch to the arc tool. I just dragged my line tool over to the toolbar, switch to the arc tool. The arc tool picks up where the line tool left off. Everything stays nice and connected. The arc tool is basically done in, in two steps. First, you establish the position and the size of the radius, and then you establish the length of the arc, okay? So I, I pulled my radius guide so that I'm coming directly to the right of the end of the forefoot section. And as I come to the right, I increase the size of my radius. I want a three foot radius. So when I get to R equals three feet here, I'm gonna left click to secure the position and the size of the radius. So the next step is to determine the length of the arc. I want the length of the arc to be nine feet, five inches, and I'm coming clockwise. So you just move your cursor clockwise, half circle, nine feet, five inches, and left click. All right, now that is half of our shape. And in the last exercise, when we were working on the kitchen island, we used the same method where we're mirroring a shape. If the other side of the shape mirrors this side, you can use the outline tool to create this other side. So let's practice that one more time. Just take your cursor over to your toolbar, click on the outline tool. There's that question mark uh, attached to your cursor. The question is, what shape do you want to outline? You can use either one of those orange squares, left click, and then offset inward one foot and left click again, and we've completed our shape. My measurements are just a little bit jumbled, but you should be able to see whether or not you have the same shape that I do. Look over at your hardscapes index, set the height, zero feet. We will not have this shape follow the terrain. All right, so this shape is complete and we want the exact same shape on the other side, but in a different orientation. That's really easy to do. We can copy and paste this over to the other corner and then we can mirror image it. We can flip it around. And uh, that's something that you want to do when you have repetition and pattern like this, when you have the same thing uh, repeating over and over again, which we, you'll see a lot of times in, in architectural detail. So to copy and paste this, we press Control C for copy and then Control V as in Victor will produce the copy. 
Just put it over anywhere to the left. I'll have to adjust the position. So just left click and drop it in over on the left hand side. So it copied the exact same shape in the same orientation, but I need to mirror this using tools that I have for mirroring in my panel menu. Scroll down to the bottom of the panel menu. And what we're looking for is our object modification tab. And then we're looking for the button that says mirror H, which means mirror horizontally, left click, and that's going to flip that shape around. Now I'll just use my move tool, move that over and put it in the same position as the uh, handrail on the right hand side. All right, so we've got our two handrails in. We practiced using the arc tool. Let's uh, go into 3D, make sure everything looks okay. All right, looks kind of funny right now because the terrain is level, but when we create our slope going down and away from the front of the house, it'll expose the side of those handrails and our steps. And that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna put our steps in. All right, let's go back into 2D. We have an auto step builder. Uh, it is a tool that makes steps for us. It's called the create staircase feature. And that is up in our hardscapes and decks tab. Everything's all grayed out because I don't have anything selected. Uh, and that's fine. I don't need to select anything. The way the create staircase feature works is when you click on it, you get this little rectangle stair or step and you attach it to the shape that you want steps from. The system automatically calculates how many steps are needed to get from that shape down to the lower surface. Because we don't have a lower surface yet, we'll just manually apply the settings. All right, so let's click on Create Staircase. Bring your cursor over, there's that shape I was talking about. You're going to touch your cursor to the shape that you want steps from. So go to the end of the walkway, touch your cursor, and that step is going to snap on. You're gonna left click and drop it in. And, and if we had a slope, it would calculate multiple steps, but we're gonna do it manually because we don't have a slope yet. So once you have the step inserted, you have four modification points. The outer points move independently. The points that are touching your shape move the shape to the left or to the right proportionately. They stretch the step. So we would want to use the points that are touching the shape. Just left click and drag to the right on the right side. Left click and drag to the left on the left side. And you see how that snaps on to the adjacent shapes. Kind of nice that we had that handrail there to snap onto. So that's one of the reasons why I did this in the order that I did it in. Um, it, it really will be very helpful for these steps to conform to those side or handrails. All right, now that we have a create staircase feature inserted, a stair builder, um, go down to the panel menu and you'll see some settings that were not there before. Once we have this automatic stair builder inserted and selected, you'll see this long list of staircase options. The first option is what type of shape do you want? Um, standard or, or wedding cake, something a little bit more elaborate. We just want standard, normal steps. The first value that you see is depth, and that determines the distance across the top so that would be the tread of the step, and we want that to be two feet, nice and wide. So you see how that increased the distance across the top. The height is the rise. How far down do we step between each steps or how far up do we step between each steps? So height equals rise. We're gonna set the rise to one foot, zero inches. Okay. On lip style, I will set that to none. Step count, I'm gonna set that to three. I want three steps. Now watch what happens when I increase the number of steps. See how the create staircase feature conformed to the adjacent shapes. 
that's really nice. That's that's what it's supposed to do, and and it really makes uh, building steps and and creating steps in the software really fast and easy. All right, one more thing that we need to do, and that is to go down to the convert staircase to click on hardscapes. And now each one of these steps is a hardscape and I can select it independently. That's going to be really important for your uh, data. Your smart data will accumulate all of your shapes that you create. And if you were building this, that would be a part of the you know materials list that you would need. So that conversion, convert to uh, hardscapes is is really important. Now when we go into 3D, the steps are going to look kind of strange because they're going down into the dirt. But remember, there will be a slope there. And as soon as we apply the slope, uh, the steps and the handrails are going to look like they're supposed to look like. We're just not there yet. We haven't made our, we have not made our um, changes in elevation yet. All right, that's the way that should look. So if yours looks like mine, you've done everything correctly. I'm going to go back into 2D. So back in 2D, we have a couple more shapes that we're going to make in this stage. And um, this is the hardscapes and wood deck stage. So we're going to make a wood deck next. We're going to make sure that we don't have anything selected. Left click away from your shapes. Okay, now you can go to your hardscapes and decks tab and click on wood deck. That, that gets us set up to create a wood deck. And the wood deck that we're going to make is going to be in the backyard. So I'm going to zoom into the backyard area, specifically the extension that we created on the second patio. So I'm zooming into that area. Now the wood deck is going to be a square shape. So we're going to use the same method that we've used before to, me to make a, um, a four-sided shape that's even on all sides, but still using the rectangle tool. I'm going to left click on the rectangle tool, bring it over and go to the bottom right hand corner of that extended section of the uh, patio. I'm going to hold the shift key down, left click, and I'm going to create a 15 by 15 uh, foot patio 15 by 15 I've got it all squared away I'm going to left click and complete my wood deck okay now once we complete our shape we're going to go over to our hardscapes index tab and we're going to set the height of this wood deck to zero feet six inches this is a very low profile wood deck so just six inches is exposed above ground level we have an interactive diagram of a wood deck and you can hover your cursor over the different parts of the wood deck and a little call out tells you what that part of the wood deck is. You have your miters and dividers, surface boards, framing, fascia, skirt, and posts. So you click on the different parts of the wood deck and see the settings that you can customize to make the wood deck look exactly like either what your client has or what you're going to build for them. For this particular low profile wood deck, really the only thing that we're going to need to manage at all is um, the surface boards. We can control how the surface boards look. So if you click on the surface boards, you'll see the toggle to turn the surface boards on or off. If you wanted to see the framing, you have overhang past framing. If you turn that on, you can set the distance of the overhang. I'm gonna set mine to two inches. And then we're going to look at the width of the board. You have options for the size of the width of the board and any gaps that you want to create or none. Um, I'm going to set the width of the board to one foot zero inches. Now with the wood deck, there are different displays that you can see when you're in your plan view or when you're in the 2D environment. Those are up in your hide and unhide. If you go up to your hide and unhide, we were looking at this at the beginning of the training, you can hide and unhide shapes. You can set up your displays uh, down at the bottom. But in the hardscapes tab right there in the middle or, or category right there in the middle, there's an option for wood deck and how you want the surface boards displayed. You want to see the surface boards? Do you want to see the framing? Do you want to see solid? 
that's up to you. So if yours looks just a little bit different than mine, it's probably because we have different displays in our hide and unhide menu. Doesn't affect in any way how the shape is going to look in, in the 3D environment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that, activate my move tool, go into 3D and see what that wood deck looks like in 3D. Now those changes that I made back in back in 2D, back in the plan view, you can technically make those in 3D so you can see what's happening when you make the changes. So that's another option. But it looks like what I want it to look like. And I purposely drew that in the order that I'm drawing um, so that I know exactly where the next shape is going to go. And that's going to be a hardscape. And um, it's going to extend below the wood deck. So having the wood deck here is a really good site reference from a training perspective. Next, I'm going to draw a retaining wall as a hardscape. So we'll go back into 2D. Make sure that our wood deck is not selected. It's a good habit to get into because if I go over and click on hardscape, if, if my if my wood deck is selected, it'll switch it over to a hardscape uh, looking shape. And that's not what we want. So just make sure that you click away from your shapes. Go over to your hardscapes index tab, click on hardscape. Yep, we're back to hardscapes again. We get lots of questions about retaining walls. Um, where do I make my retaining walls? Where do I draw them? Do I draw them in walls and fences in stage three? Um, you know, we feel like the best shape for a retaining wall is a hardscape. Uh, you can really customize the cap or the lip. You can customize the material. So um, we're going to make it in the hardscape stage. So we're ready. We're set up to draw the hardscape um, uh, retaining wall. It's a long, narrow wall starting from the bottom right hand corner of the wood deck. So I'm going to go over to my rectangle tool. Left click at the bottom right hand corner of the wood deck. That's why I wanted that wood deck there. Now I'm going to come to the left 56 feet. So really kind of keep everything steady. Come over 56 and then down one foot. So we've got a 56 long foot 56 foot long retaining wall with a one foot width. Once it's complete, we go over to our hardscapes tab and set the height to two feet, six inches. Okay, and then you could set up the lip style for whatever lip style you want. I'm gonna go with the round lip style, lip height three inches, but you can set it to whatever you want. All right, now I'm gonna deselect it and go over into 3D, check it out. Things are starting to come together. Looks great, I'm gonna go back into 2D.